Hello, welcome to The Table. My name's Jonathan Hicks. I'm Steve Rain. I'm Amy Worsley. And this is our top five dice games. So, I mean, you can filter by this on Board Game Geek, can't you? Effectively pull up all the games that involve dice. But essentially, it's any game where dice is a significant component, I think. So, something like Monopoly, for example, wouldn't count, where you're just rolling dice to do something. It has to be a kind of main component of the game. Does that sound fair? I went down that route. I went so that without... You know, you couldn't you couldn't swap the dice out for a spinner or something like that. That the dice were it's an you know, integral part. Yes, yeah, integral part of yeah. the game. You, there's ways to manipulate dice or whatever like that or whatever, whatever it might be. But you know, the dice are the central mechanism of the game or there thereabouts. Yeah, it feels like this is a relatively recent phenomenon in that traditionally dice were just used to kind of move a piece or generate a little bit of randomness. But people like game designers have come up with more and more innovative ways to use dice. So they can be used as like counters or you can manipulate your dice and do all kinds of interesting things with the dice. So it feels like a lot of my games are more recent games because they've really, you know, taken it out of the box, if you like, in terms of what you could do with dice, which has been great. I mean, I love mm. dice games as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. All right. On to number five. Marvellous. It's number five. Now, there are a number of dice Euro games uh, where Euros have incorporated dice in very interesting ways that I like. And uh, one of those, one of my favourites, is Rajas of the Ganges, where essentially it's a great sort of Indian themed game where you, are, you have a board and you're trying to build various buildings and mark and things on your board. Um, the really interesting mechanism is you have one track for money that goes one way around the outside of the board and another track for points that goes the other way around the outside of the board. And when your two tracks cross over, then you win. So you're kind of racing either to get lots of money or lots of points or lots of both. But that's, I've never seen that before. That's really interesting. But in terms of the dice themselves, they're kind of like workers. So you're using the dice to do various actions on the board. Um, and there's different colors of dice. So it's very interesting You when you're acquiring dice, you're gonna maybe want orange dice because this orange building is available and you need the orange dice to buy it or you might want the blue dice for this other action. But there's a lot of interesting decisions in terms of how do I use my dice? And you've got to pay a lot of attention to what everyone else is doing. But it does what many sort of modern Euros does really well with lots of interacting mechanisms. You need to think a lot about if I get this, I can combo with that. And if I get this bonus, I can use it on this. And so you can feel like you're not doing much, and then suddenly it all comes together and you can really accelerate forward. So there's lots of things I like about it, but the central dice placement is really interesting. Uh, there are ways to mitigate your dice, um, but not, it is a game where high dice are good for some actions and low dice are good for others. So depending on yes. the dice you roll, if you can't mitigate your dice, it kind of dictates what you can do in a turn. Uh, the, the strongest part about this game for me is the track, the two tracks crossing. Yeah, um, I'm not a fan of the game necessarily as much as other people. I think. Yeah, it surprised me. I think I, I like it more than most people. I don't know why, but yeah. I really like it. Yeah, it's okay. It's, a, it's an okay dice placement game. I think. I think it's, for a dice placement game. There's quite a few on my list already that I would rather play. Okay. I've not played it personally, but I think with, like, I with, think it, with you, an interesting you, mechanic like that, it sounds like I probably you, would like you would, it. You would like it. Yeah. I think. So I, I will be willing to give that one a go soon. Okay. I'll teach it to you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so mine five is, the game they're going to laugh at me for, is Backgammon. Because <laughs> I mentioned it, I mentioned it on the list. Back, backgammon is... It's back. Uh, <laughs> Backgammon is a game where you are one of the only games on the list where you are reacting to what you've rolled rather than you're trying to use the dice in the best way possible. Um, it's a much more reactive game and you're trying to make the best move possible with the dice roll you've got. There's no way that if I move here and then I roll a double five next time I'm going to win, you just, you just can't guarantee that. So you've got to move there on the basis that if I don't roll a three next time I'm going to win or something like that. You've got to give yourself the best possibility to win and because it is a dice game and a lot of the dice games I've got on my list where you can mitigate things are not luck based this one is this was clearly a luck based game but there is skill there you're kind of making the best move possible with the dice you've got and some games you just won't win because you'll roll really poorly but in general if you do continue to make the best move possible as you go it will be a game you do better at I really like it um, but it is a lazy Sunday af afternoon game for me I can just play it while I'm um, chatting and eating and drinking other things um, and I understand you might not agree with that. One of my issues with older games involving dice is the randomness that they add. As you say, if you roll badly you're just going to get done and there's nothing you can do about it. And most modern games that employ dice well won't, will avoid that. Is there some way you can mitigate the dice, you say change the rolls with extra tokens or something like this. Um, 
But yeah, backgammon just doesn't do that. It's, that that's an issue for me. Yeah. I also really enjoy backgammon, so I, I guess I just never considered that it's a dice game. Uh, it is, yeah. fundamentally, now that I think about it, but it didn't make my list because I didn't really think about it that way. It, but, is, it yeah. is different to every other game I'm going to say later, because yeah. it is, it, it, like I say, it's reactive. Yeah, but I do you're like it a lot. You're reacting to what you've rolled, Yeah. And but you're still using what you've rolled. It's not just react. oh, okay. Yeah. It's not like Snakes and Ladders where you, can, you don't even need to be there to play. Yeah, yeah, there is some skill, and there is. There are, yes. Yeah, I've got loads yeah, of choices. Once I've rolled, yeah. I've still yeah. got choices. Yeah. Okay, choices. and what I roll will dictate what my choices are, but I can still make the best choice possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. important. Yeah. So mine is King of Tokyo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like these guys are going to disagree with me here, but I really like it. It's a much lighter game. Um, that's kind of one of the things I really like about it. I love the theme. I like the artwork. I just like it. It's a really nice game. Um, the dice element does give it randomness and you can lose as a part of that but it doesn't dissuade me from liking the game I still enjoy it every time I play I think it's funny and I think that's really a part of what I like about it I can play it with casual friends who don't really play many board games and we all have fun and I've played it semi-competitively like in a tournament and it was really fun also I didn't do very well but it's a dice rolling game sometimes it's got to be some randomness i don't mind the randomness in this actually because it is just silly fun as you yeah. say mm, and i think it's a very good game my issue with this one is that i think there are very few groups of people who i could play with this with that we would all enjoy the game mm. so it really has to be the right group for this one like you can yeah. play it with kids but the kids can get upset because of the player elimination and things like this. You've got to be very careful about that. You don't want to be playing it with gamers because it's not a game you can take seriously. No, no. As you say, you want to sort of play it almost with non-gamer yeah. adults who just yeah. want to have a bit of fun. But I, I have a gaming group. I say gaming group like that. Yeah, and so yeah. it's one of my favourite dice rolling games because it gets played so much. Mm. Because we often go away together and it's one of the constant ones that we've had a few drinks for a bit too boozy to play something heavy and boom king of tokyo comes to the table again yeah. sometimes <laughs> yeah. i just chuck dice and they're very nice yeah like, heavy dice and, yeah. Yeah, and have a shot. giant dragon and a, and a mecha yeah. bunny it's, and it's, it's just fun yatsy done well yeah <laughs> it is yeah. well i never it's number four um, so my number four is a newish game uh, I've not played too many times but every time I've played it I've really got lost in thought and that's Coimbra um, Coimbra is a dice selection game you are kind of on your turn You all the dice have been rolled and you're taking a dice touching one of your coloured tokens to it and placing it in a place and just that little simple task you've got so much to choose from because you've got four different colours of dice uh, and a wild dice as well. So four different colours of dice, you like the colour matters because you get to do an action of that colour later on. You've got high dice and low dice. Well high dice are good because they get your first pick of the cards you're going to get and the cards are really good because they get you to do that and if you really want that card you have to take a high dice. But the low dice are good because they save you resources. You then have to pay for the resources of the dice you do. And then when you're putting them out halfway through the round you think well What's he going? He's going. He's going with a five, so I could go there with a six and definitely get the card I want. But then I won't be able to afford this other thing, so I could go there with a three. Hope he doesn't take the card I want, then get the card I want and do what. It will. But the colour matters. There isn't a three of the right colour, and you've got all these things going through your head. And some people won't like that game. Some some people will get well, information overload. But that's the sort of thing I like in a game, and it all centres around these dice. There are all different actions you can do and different bits, and you can travel and you can do some and some tracks to go up. But it all centres around picking the dice to get to the actions to get the cards you want to do the things. And that dice bit, of the, you know, is such a central part of the game. Without that dice, that game wouldn't be any good. It's a very good game, and I would happily play it. But as Euros go, generally, I'd rate quite a lot of Euros higher than Coimbra. And I think that's because it is too thinky, as you're saying, in terms of those options. There's too many kind of, oh, this, but this, no, okay, this one with this one. Oh, but And I suppose it gives you that feeling of, I like picking between, you know, two or three good choices. Like, oh, that would be really good. Oh, but so with that one. Oh, but that looks right. Oh, what do I pick? Whereas Coimbra gives you that, ah, oh, but the problem with this is that. And, oh, this one would be really expensive. Oh, but I really want, ah, oh, it's like a... You hate those games. Yes. You actually hate those games. Yeah. Because every decision feels like it's not the best decision, but you've got to pick one of them. And it's whoever does that the best, mm -hmm. in a sense, who wins. And so that's why I wouldn't be as keen on it. But it, it's really solid. You know, It's very well designed in that sense. 
I love it for the reasons you hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I Me love, too. love that there are, that everything has a reason. I think that's what I really love about it is that the colour matters, the pips on the dice matter, everything matters. Where I put things, every choice I make has an impact on what's going to happen that turn. And the fact that your income is affected by that too, because you only get income for the dice that you've put out that round. And so I've got to make sure that my colours are varied so I'm getting the right types of income for that round. Otherwise your next round will be really poor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I really like that. I like that I've really got to think about it. I haven't played it too much because I just haven't had the time, but I rate it very highly. I very much like Coimbra and I would like a copy. (laughs) Uh, Amy. Amy. Hello. My next one is Elder Sign. Ooh. I really like it. It's actually one of probably the first modern board games that I actually purchased when getting back into games because I just kind of went to a lot of board game cafes or relied on friends. Elder Sign is one of the ones that I first went out and got myself because I was like, I need this game. Um, I really love the theme. Um, I like that it's cooperative. Because that's quite rare in a dice rolling game, I find. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, I don't know. There's just so much to like about it. I like that it's a bit story led. Like that there are there is actually text on the cards that matter. Yeah, the theme's good. The theme is lovely. It's so well executed for what it is, and I like the theme. Um, and then just the fact that there are so many options. Like I, I, there are so many choices you can make. I get to choose which room I go into. What things I tackle whether I help my friends or abandon them um if you die you get a new character there's no player elimination um there are the expansions are great I, I've got a couple and I enjoy them um so when I started to find it a bit too easy when I found that I was willing too often I just went out and bought another expansion now it's really hard again <laughs> and I really like it for those reasons uh, it was on my shortlist I really like Elder Sign the first time I played it though I didn't like it I mean, really didn't like it. So it surprised me. Uh, and the reason for that is partly I, when I first played it, I played it with a lot of people. It, we were like five or six people, not mm, all the maximum players. Slow, slow game it was just then. so slow. Yeah. Perfect. And the other reason I didn't like it when I first played it is that it just felt so random. It's like, okay, I go to this location, and I'm going to roll my dice to pass the test, and oh, well, I got unlucky. And so I failed. And then I wait 20 minutes for my turn to come around, and oh, <laughs> right, I got yeah. unlucky again, and I failed. And that just, it was no fun at all. But having, I played it a lot solo, and two player works really well as well. But the thing it does really well is calculated risk and mitigating dice rolls. Yeah. When you choose to go to a location, there's actually a lot of thought involved in terms of, because you can pick from a whole pile of different locations, and you have certain colours of dice that can help you. Some colours of dice are better than others. And it's a bit like you have to roll the dice and then you sort of pick some other ones to roll again. Yeah, and you can re-roll and yeah. That's right. So there's all of that. But you need, there are certain locations that you shouldn't tackle until you have the appropriate resources that let you to mitigate the dice, or you have the extra dice. And some things can lock dice down, which means you can't use them, and you really need to tackle with them as a priority. So it's one of those games that doesn't look like it has any skill at all in, but with practice but you is. can get a lot better. It's a very skillful game. Yeah. So that's why, I, I played it on, on the app actually, that's yeah. how I yeah. got to love the game. Yeah. And then I bought a physical copy and started playing it myself, just solo, but really, really liked it. It's really a very good game. I played it. <laughs> Too much theme for you. Well, when you Amy said theme, I switched off. Didn't I? <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's fair. I don't know if you'd like it though. I don't. I'll play anything you once. Would, but we'll see. It's weird that you played we'll a play. game and you really didn't like it, yeah. and you played again. I think this is the most extreme reaction that I've ever had from initial play. A dislike to, to now what I'm wow, doing. I really love it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. there have been some others you've not liked. You didn't like Patrick or was all the first time we played them. Yes, and you 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 rate them quite highly now. I think. Yeah, as all I could see, you know, I was probably a bit middling and it's gradually crept up. Patrick, the theme immediately put me off. But then mm. we played it and we played it and played it. And, you're like and I was it. like, oh, actually, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I, I really didn't like Hell Sign. And I do. And now it's great. Yeah. I'll, have to, I'll try it once, I'm sure. Yeah. The Lovecraftian theme kind of gets a lot of people as well. They, they, yeah. they like that and then, yeah. it, and then it grows from that. And there is way more skill than it than first appears. Jonathan. Of my losing track here. Number four. I've distracted you with Elder Sign. I can't remember four. what it is. I've distracted you with Elder Sign. Yeah, yeah. I've got so into that. <laughs> just, just say Coimbra. I could have been, oh, yes, I remember what it is. 
Right, it's Liar's Dice. Oh. Which is the old one featured on Pirates of the Caribbean, where you roll your dice and they're kind of hidden under the cup. So you sort of look and see what you've got, but no one else can see. And it's just a bluffing game. You're calling out how many of a certain number there are all together in the table. So you may have rolled your dice and you've got three fives. And you sort of call out, okay, I'm going to go with four fives, because I think there's maybe at least one five between them. And then Amy looks at her dice and she makes a similar call, but you have to keep calling higher. So she could say five fives, or you can go with a higher number, so she could go four sixes, for example. But after once you get to six, it kind of caps it off, and then you've got to mm. get a higher dice. And if you think there aren't that many, then you can call them out. Bluff. And if you sort of reveal all the dice, and you see who wins, and the loser loses a dice. So it's not, in terms of modern game design, I don't think it is the best design, in that the, the people who lose end up worse off, if that's makes sense because the more dice you've got the better you can calculate the odds and bluff everyone else the thing i love about it is the bluffing though you can look at your dice and have no fives at all and call three fives because they're thinking oh yeah he must have a, a few fives a there decent chance and yeah. so they call four fives or something and it comes back around here i'm like no that's a bluff you know i'm going to call that one because i haven't got any fives at all mm. and then i go oh, i've got four <laughs> yeah so it's it's really nice for that it's the bluffing that i really like about it um, yeah. But yeah, it's um, again. I think you need people of a similar skill level. Yeah. Because yeah, it's just yeah. no fun if you just keep using your dice each there, time. There's some very thinky people who play this game, and they like it because they think about game theory, and they think, you know, that's a good bluff and that's a bad bluff. You shouldn't bluff that many, or you should bluff more than that. Or this is an opportunity to pick on the person with one dice and that okay. sort of thing. And they really game theory out because I've seen, uh, like, Anchorage played it at the World Mind Sports Olympiad. Oh, really? Yeah. He played it. I think he ended up winning the event. I think. Wow. Uh, so you know, they, some some people really know what they're doing with this, and there are things. But it is still a dice game, so they might make a stupid bluff that say four sixes, and you're looking there, looking at four sixes yourself, and you go, hmm, okay, five sixes? When it gets back to them, they call the bluff, and because you've got so many, they've done themselves in, but accidentally in the past. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I think there's a better version of this game than Carity. Okay. From what I want from a game like this, I think Carity does better. Okay. I, think. I was going to say something similar in that I like Sly Dice which is a really lovely version of Liar's Dice. It's different. You have scoring, kind of, not scoring, but um, goals in the middle, and those are what you're trying Digging to get. Yeah. And so okay. I'm yeah. I'm trying to get uh, four numbers in a row, so I need one to four, or like, whatever. Um, or like, four, five, six, or be different goals. And then I'm trying to make a bluff based on one of these in the middle and then the other players are trying to call me out on getting those goals and each of the goals has different scoring and they're more difficult mm. as you go along and that is really lovely version of that game okay i'll have to try that one yeah, yeah. i've seen it but i've not played it i've seen a review of it I think. i've mm. got a friend who's got it we'll, we'll nick it for a night <laughs> all right extraordinary it's number three well, my next one, familiar, is Coimbra. Oh, my goodness. An overlap already. Um, yeah, so I won't say too much because we've been over it, but great game, love it, good choices. Complicated. Thumbs up. Okay. My number four, no, three. 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 I'm losing it tonight. <laughs> is Bora Bora, which is a Steffenfeld game and might be appearing on someone else. It is, a number three. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, it's Steffenfeld does dice manipulation and using them in alternative ways very, very well. And uh, this is definitely one of his best. Uh, you. Uh, you have to, when you use the dice, you have a selection of actions, and anyone can use the actions except the dice has to be lower, Strict, strictly lower, than anyone else who's previously used the action. But the higher the dice is, the better the action is for you. So you can go there with a six, which is great for you, you get a really good action out of it, but then pretty much anyone else can go there with all the other dice. But if you go there with a one, then your action's not going to be great, but no one else gets to do that action. You kind of block it for everyone. And that decision about how good do I want my action to be versus where can I actually go, what spaces are left, and how much do I want to block other people, it's really, really interesting. I mean, the game that's sort of on top of that is you're sort of on the islands of Bora Bora, and you're acquiring resources in typical point salad fashion, and trying to convert them into points in lots of different ways. There's lots of different tracks, you have various goals that come out, you're trying to accomplish in terms of getting your buildings out on the different islands, or collecting certain kinds of resources and things. The whole package is really, really good with lots of action combo-y goodness, 
but the dice selection in terms of how you place them is very interesting and very well done. Uh, you've only got 16 actions over the course of the game, and so mm. you've got to try and do so much. You've got nine goals to complete over yeah. 18, so 18 actions. Uh, and then all this other stuff that's going to get you points and getting jewelry and making sure you've got enough tattoos to not go last and get a bad task and stuff like that. But the way he does it well and the way he does it in a lot of his games, and this is my favourite dice, a lot of his games involve dice, this is my favourite one that he's done, is that he mitigates things very well. There are these god mm. tiles and these fire actions and things you can get which can get you little bonuses. So, you can, so you've got these god tiles which generally, this god, this god card allows me to ignore any other dice in that space, so I can put my six down even if someone's gone there. Yep. Or this one allows me to change my dice to any number, so I can go there with my two under my under that four, and then make my two a six, even though it's a two. Um, and you've got all these different things to do, and then we've got a little expansion as well, so when you roll, if you roll two the same, you get a plus minus one. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, which is a really nice little thing to do, and all those just little things. And if you let yourself, you think, oh, I've just been doing that better dice. No, you haven't. You've not given yourself the chance to mitigate those bad levels. You've not taken actions previously to get you the stuff, the, the god cows or the favourings and the offerings and stuff like that, that let you mitigate it. But it's just, I, I really like the game because it's so tight. It's so hard to kind of get everything done and still be doing well. I've not played it. <laughs> uh, you, you'd like it. I shall play it. <laughs> it's very difficult to teach this one. Yeah. If I remember the Steve first time manage. you taught this. It took a long took time, me, okay. 40 minutes, I think, the wow. first time. Wow. There's okay. just so many bits to it. Yeah. yeah. I can, I'm better now, but... Yeah. Yeah. And once you've played it, it all holds together. Yeah. Like, it makes yeah, sense. That's nice. you, oh, you, you've never taught it, but you could. Because yes. it may, it's, it's definitely easy what to do, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, it's tough. Ah, spiffing. It's number two. All right, my number two might be on somebody else's list here. And that is The Voyages of Marco Polo. Maybe not yet. <laughs> so uh, it's another dice placement game where you, it's kind of, it looks almost like it should be Ticket to Ride at first because you get a couple of routes at the start of the game and you're traveling across sort of Asia um, trying to complete certain routes. You've got to get your guys to a certain place. Um, but there's a big Euro game on top of this in terms of activate, you know, gathering resources and using them to activate certain places to cast them in for points and things. But it all revolves around the dice and the dice is so interesting in this. Uh, you roll your dice and then on your turn it's like a dice placement game so your dice is the worker and you place them in different places to take the actions but it's super restrictive and super tight so in terms of gathering resources if you want uh, camels for example you can put your dice there for camels and the more dice you put there and the higher they are the more camels you get but you're paying aren't you if, if you go with someone else anyone else has been there and that's the super restrictive thing because it's like, I really want camels. Oh, but she's just taking the camel spot. Oh, but it's going to be so expensive now. And money is so tight. It's really hard yeah. to get money, which makes it really interesting. It makes all the decisions very tricky. You often have to adapt what you're doing according to how the other people are playing. And what dice you have. Yes. You can't just plan and say, right, this turn I'm going to be doing that and that and that. And then sit back and wait. You have to think, oh, crumbs, he's done that. Now I need to do this instead. Oh, but now she's on that. And oh, I guess I'll have to adapt and try this strategy instead. So it feels very flowing, very dynamic. It's really, really interesting from that point of view. And the thing, the kind of icing on the cake that really adds to it is the powers. Yeah. And the powers are, the player powers are super powerful, very different. And you always think everyone else is better than yours. <laughs> but uh, it's a great package. I second this. It's amazing. It's, uh, yeah, it's very good. Um, it's possibly slightly to do more with dice than Bora Bora is. Bora Bora is more about mitigating the dice, but this is much more to do with you know, yes. the dice you've got. Kind of acquiring black dice, re-rolling dice, adding pips to dice, making sure you have the right dice to go in the right spots. When I want to travel, I need to go there with at least a three and so on like that. Um, but dice placement games, they weren't around you know, six, seven years ago. Mm. Now there's quite a lot of them now. Yeah. Um, in fact, at least three of the games on my list are dice placement games. So yeah, it's uh, very good. Mm. I haven't played it. Oh, Amy, what are we doing playing other games? I mean, I could be touching yeah. these. I know. It's going to be a catchphrase at this point, yeah. so... <laughs> oh, it's usually me when Mark and Jonathan are talking about all these theme games. And like, yeah, oh, theme. The only, the only issue with Voyager Marco Polo is it's very difficult on your first game to do well. Like, I did very badly on my first game. Mm. I've wondered. 
And uh, yeah, and after I played my first game, I thought, oh, okay, I think I, I see what it. I need to do. Yeah. yeah. And in my second game, I did very badly again. <laughs> oh. And I was like, oh, I'm yeah. still not getting this game. That's it okay. took me a lot of plays before I got it. I'll, and now. I'll make that mental note. I still don't do well. Now you do okay. <laughs> but I, yeah. at least I don't do badly. I don't feel I've ever come out of the game thinking, it's all right. yeah, I've, I've, if I, I couldn't play, have done then any you better. won't lose. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Make a change. Um, to my number two is uh, like a second edition of a game that is very highly rated about rolling dice, Yahtzee style, and that is Twice as Clever. It is oh, the wow. sequel to Gans Shown Clever, um, mm. and Twice as Clever, I, as a dice game, I think is excellent. I think the Yahtzee mechanic of rolling, it's not quite Yahtzee mechanic, but you roll and you pick one, then you roll the rest, you pick one. Um, you've got things like re-rolls and things that mitigate it. But the thing that's elevated this for me above uh, Genshin and Clever is the putbacks. The way the dice score are different, but the ability to kind of put back dice you've previously locked. Oh, I can take that five now, I'm going to lock these because I've got some putbacks. I can put back a dice that I really need. Um, and recently, it's the dice game I've played the most over the last few months. I've got an app on it, and loads of people on the Facebook groups and the board game groups and so are, are posting their scores on this app. And I've probably played it, oh, I have no idea how many times I could look at the app, like hundreds of times solo on, you know, on the bus to work or anything like that. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think the choices you've got are great. It feels less like a filler than it's uh, the original. Um, the, yeah, the twice as clever. Right. It feels much more of a heavy, thinkier game. Um, whereas pretty damn clever, you could just you, know, you just you just have, have a go at the end of the night or the start of the night or something. It just it takes it just takes longer and, and, and you're thinking much more. I think it's definitely a thinkier version of the game. Yeah. yeah, if you're looking for something a bit extra. Have you ever played it with someone who really trusted to do you in? Because now you've got putbacks. If they roll and lock something that you really need, they can go, oh, you need that, don't you? On putback. <laughs> and again. So yeah. you can you can do that. You couldn't do that in the original. You yeah, couldn't really yeah, yeah, yeah. mess with other people. Yeah, at the, on your last draw, you've got a white six or a you know orange five. You'll, you'll take the white six to not give them the white six or something like that, and whatever, fine. But now you can directly mess with other people. I haven't mm. done it much because I generally play it solo. But yeah, mm. I can't work out which one I prefer. They're both great games, and they do for the length of time. The amount of game that crams into the length is brilliant. It feels yeah. like you're playing a proper, you know, big box Euro game, but in a very small package. And that, yeah. it, they Neat both do that really well. You have decisions on every roll. Yeah. Even if that decision yeah. is, do I re roll? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, do it, do that one, oh, that one. Ugh. I think we were talking about Azul versus Stained Glass yeah. um, earlier. And I think it, there's a bit of that for me in terms of the mm. Doppelt So Clever because. It adds a bunch of extra things and complexity. I don't know that it takes away from the streamlined version for me of the original. I think I'll still very happy to play both of them. Yeah. And definitely twice as clever as more of a gamer's game. But I like the simplicity of the original. I might play Gantry and Clever face to face because it's more of a filler. But if I was ever playing like on my app or something, I would mm. play twice as clever. Mm. I think twice as clever is a better game. Mm. Okay. So mine is Pretty Darn Clever. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> the original. Yeah. Because right. I have decided which one I prefer. Right. And I prefer the original. Okay. Um, I like that it's a filler. And I like that it's that compact. Just, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm better at it. Who knows? But I just prefer it. <laughs> I, I'm getting I'm, get, I'm getting there with, with the sequel. With, um, it's it's so hard, I think, to get your head on the strategy on the second one. I, I get it. And I'm happy with it. And I understand it. And I would happily play either, like you say, but I think the original just takes the cake for me. If I had the choice, I could. Put, I would put both on the list. I mean, I could have put both on the list, but it just feels like I know a space. Slot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love dice games. Um, um, yeah, so that makes it simple for mine. I can't see I anyone know. liking one and not liking the other. Oh yeah, no, that would. I think the, it'd be the unusual behind them. Yeah, uh, unless yeah. they really. Can't get their head around this sl that slight level up on the second one, which some people might yeah. not be able to. If you really like the first one, you will like the second one at least. Like at least it. like yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You might not stuff. prefer it, but I think you would like it. Yeah. By Jove, it's number one. All right. So to work out turn order, we have got a question as always, and today's question is: What's the name of the last board game that you bought? Mine was Ugtech. Not when we hit the one yeah. we had. Okay. Mine was Heroes of Terranoth. And mine was the Sheriff of Nottingham, the Merry Men expansion. Okay. Jonathan, Amy, me. Mm. Yep. All right, great. So, my number one 
the best dice game ever is Too Many Bones, which is very different from the other games on the list, really. It's not a Euro by any means. Uh, it's a big thematic dungeon crawl, essentially, but this uses dice in a very original way. Um, as well as some of the dice can be used when kind of rolling in combat. There's like an abstract combat system where you're moving things around on a grid. But the main thing is the leveling up system. So when you get some experience, you can level up your character, then you are acquiring more dice. You have a huge pool of dice and you pick one or two of them each time you level up that you're going to add to your character. And the dice will change your characters in all kinds of interesting ways. So it might be dice that you can use in combat. So you'd roll the dice potentially and it might be able to allow you to, when you attack, you hit two things at once. It might be a pet that comes on the board and starts moving around as an actual creature on the board. It might be a dice that lets you heal other people. There's all kinds of interesting dice that do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Each of the characters you can play in the game are very, very different from each other, and you get a completely different set of dice. Not only are each of the dice different from everyone else's dice, but each of the faces of each of the dice are often different. So there's tons and tons of variety. And when you level up, like if you go through a kind of campaign and play a series of games, then by the time you've finished, you will have only used maybe half of the dice that are available for that particular character. So each time you play, you can go through a different route. Instead of going for this dice, that dice, and that dice, you could take well, this one, this one, and I'll go down this route instead. So even the same characters can feel very different each time you play them, and each of the characters feels so different. It's just a fantastic dungeon crawl. If you like that thematic adventure game, and the dice are used more originally than any other game I think I've ever seen, it's, it's fantastic. I've not played it. Yes, and I don't know if you'd like it. It's a lot of things. Uh, yeah, you do mention it though a lot. Is it something I should try once? Can you just play one game of this? Or? The difficulty is that it's long. You yeah. probably, even with the introductory scenario, you're looking at kind of three or four hours to complete a campaign. Mm. You could kind of play one battle, which would take maybe half an hour, but then I don't know that you'd really get the feel okay. for the game. It's the leveling up that makes it so interesting. Like Arcadia Quest, leveling, leveling up is yes. like just playing one scenario is fine, but then making your characters better. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I can yeah, see that. Definitely. I've also not played it, but I really like Dungeon Crawlers, so I probably okay. would enjoy it a lot. And the dice mechanics do sound really interesting, so I'd be willing to give that one a shot, even if it's a longer game. Okay, great. I'll have to arrange something. Uh, uh, mine is a Grand Austria Hotel. Okay. Oh. Which I really like the dice drafting element of it and how the dice can change what actions, sorry, what value each action holds each round. So if something has a one and I really need to do that action, maybe it's worth me saving it till next round or is there anything more valuable I can do because something has lots on, lots of sixes on instead. And I just really like the way that that is incorporated into a Euro style game. Because you roll a big pile of dice, don't you? Yeah, which is really satisfying. And then you play with actions, don't you? So all the yeah. ones go there and... So one turn you might have lots of threes yeah. and hardly yeah. any fours, but then the other turn it might be different. It's, yeah. a, it's a really nice mechanism because it makes the three action stronger yes. the more dice are there. Yeah. Which means it's almost certainly the action that gets taken before it's your turn. And then by the time it's your turn, two of the threes have gone. You're like, that's not as good as it used to be. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it, yeah. it diminishes as well the, further, the longer the round goes on. And if you wanted to, if there's absolutely nothing you can do or the action that you want to do is really weak, you can pass, put a dice in the bin and wait till the end of the round, re-roll the dice and see if you get anything better. It's a okay mechanic for kind of a case of, um, oh, I really can't do anything better. I have really, I don't think I've ever used that mechanic personally. Like I, I just deal with what I've got and that's what I like about it is that it is flexible enough that you can do that. It feels too much like a Hail Mary, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. It's one of my two criticisms of the game. One, we played it four player, and I've only played it once, so I, mm. I probably should give it another go with fewer players, maybe. But we played it four players very slow, but that just doesn't seem like a good enough way to mitigate bad dice rolls, because when we played, there were a few times where you roll a bunch of dice, it's like 16 dice or something, but there were like two actions that were blank a few times. Mm. And if one, yes, of those is the, damaged, if one of those is the wild action means you can't do the other action at all that round yeah, unless yeah. you do the, the bin anything but it just doesn't feel doesn't I, feel I safe. always kind of find that there's something else you can do though that is worth your time until the next round but I can see where you're coming if, from if and I get, normally play three players so there's, there's an action to get money isn't there yeah and we had it that I think it was Noah couldn't take money on the round he couldn't do much because the, the, yeah. there were the dice there for him to do it. And it's like, well, you could pass and you could bin it and you can hope to get some money, but you, you, you miss out on the good actions there and then because you haven't got the money to do them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, 
My main issue probably with the game is the theme, to be honest. It mm. just, you know, you're See, housing people in the hotel, yeah, aren't you? It's yeah, that's what pleasantly me. surprised me about it, though, because at first I looked at it and thought, oh, gosh, this looks dull. Played it and loved it. And I, the theme grew on me because right. I really like the theme now. Um, and I wouldn't change it. I like that kind of, you know, when you've got the person, you close the door, they're all done. Like, <laughs> that, that room's ready. Yeah. It's all grand. Yeah. Like, it's great. It's I don't know. It's all grand. <laughs> it is. I like it. I just, yeah. I, I like the theme. I like the mechanics. I didn't think I would. And that's, I think, maybe why I like it so much. It's well designed, I think. Yeah, it is. In fact, I know I somebody like for whom it's their all time favourite game. Mm. So it is clearly very good. It's well, very a, lot popular. a lot of people rave about it. So. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. My number one is The Void is a Marco Polo. <laughs> yeah, and it's always very hard for me to distinguish between. I'm not going to go too much into how we play because Jonathan raved about it, but it's always hard for me to distinguish between this and Bora Bora as dice placement games. There's more dice in The Voyages of Marco Polo, and a lot of the player power is involved around some of the dice as well. But I would describe Bora Bora as tight and Voyages of Marco Polo as harsh. Because if someone goes where you want, it costs you a lot of coins to go there but you can always get coins you just spend a dice here for three coins spend a dice here for three coins and then go where they've gone to get the camels you need to do the action but it feels like it's it's unfair that you're having to waste a lot of dice to kind of you know because you've been blocked in by someone else who just happened to go before mm. you with a lot of euro games if you think far enough ahead and you're familiar with the game you're like oh if i get this i can add it to this and combine it with that and i've just got enough to do this thing which will really yeah. give me a bunch of points with marco polo what nearly always happens is okay if i get this and i combine it with this combine it with this Oh, I'm just one camel short. Okay, how about if I get this and come out with that? Oh, I'm a coin short. It's like, whatever yeah, you try and do, yeah. you just never quite have enough. And then what you have to do is spend the dice to get the coins you need to do that, to get the camels you need to do that. To the, yeah. Like, now you've got them dice. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you've spent that dice to get the coins. So, yeah, I think it's a very good game. I think it's hard to tell which one's better in this list I've rated uh, micro or higher, but it depends on the dice, which you want to play. You haven't played it? No. We should do that next yes, time we're at work. soon. <laughs> Um, honourable mentions and oh, now I've got one that will Ooh. not be on your list I've got a couple yeah go on then and it should be it's because we played it at the Aircon Tooting Car Moon because I think that will be on my list once it's released Tooting Car Moon is uh, a new game by the guy who did Tear to Aken. it's a prototype we played a prototype Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it and it didn't good. look. It didn't look. I it mean, it's a prototype. It was bits of paper and card that yeah. had been handwritten on. So it, was, we, a it was super it was prototype. Fan, it was fantastic. It I was very it. good. But yeah, I couldn't judge it until I play. The but if the mechanics, were, if it just looked better than it was, I think it's great. I think it would be on this list. It's mm. better than Tear to Wacken, even for the prototype. Wow. I think. Ooh. I think it was very good. So it, it's that. coming out in 2020, which is a shame. So it's like <sighs> 18 months to wait. Gotta wait. Yeah, uh, something um, like that. Castles uh, of Burgundy very almost made my yeah, list. Yeah, me too. Oh, really? That was yeah. number six or seven, I think. Mm, yeah. It's very dry. <laughs> it's Stefan Feld. I really yeah, like yeah. it. It's very good. It's just not enough theme in that for me. I had uh, Pretty Darn Clever on my list. Mm. And Elzheim, which we talked about earlier. Those yeah. are my two. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, those were our top five dice games. Which are your favourite dice games? And if you have an idea for a top five list that we haven't done yet, oh, yes. please yeah. comment below. We might have a chance to do it if we can agree on the, <laughs> the quotas and rules for doing so. But yeah, we'll give it a go. So yeah, let us know what your favourite dice games are and uh, give us some suggestions for other lists we can do. All right, thanks very much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.